Let's get the ball rolling with a look at the brand new facility at the, uh, the Seaford Football Club. Yes, fantastic. Tigers are back home and it's changed a bit. Everything old is new again. It has been a makeover of epic proportions. Seaford Football Club has seen its old ground transformed into a state-of-the-art local football facility. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get much of a chance to use it last year. We only had two weeks and uh, we got hit by lockdown, so two games and then, you know, into recess until April. But to come back here and bright sunny day today for today's game really shows off the place. But the transformation from this to this and from this to this took time and came at a cost. We started the conversations with the politicians back in 2012, so it was nine years of, uh, of talks and planning and whatever that went into getting us here. And uh, when we did finally arrive here, we had to buy appliances and furniture and fit the bar out. And we raised $100,000 in six weeks between the football and the career club, which was just an amazing effort and so many generous people. The club's staying power was tested by being away from its home base for so long. Nearly four seasons, so that was pretty hard. Um, it certainly hit us in the hip pocket in terms of revenue and, and we lost um, some supporters that didn't want to travel to the other facility. But, um, gee, they came back last year, everyone was pretty enthusiastic to get back into this place and, you know, if you take a look around and see how good the facility is, you understand that. Unfortunately, the Tigers' return to RF Miles Reserve was stymied by COVID restrictions. That wasn't getting finished until about midway through last year, so we back-ended a lot of our home games. So the first, you know, five, six, seven games, we spent most of the year away and obviously missed out on gate takings and all that sort of stuff. And then. We finally got two, two games here at the um, New Pavilion, which were fantastic, huge crowds, you know, bumper days for the club. And then uh, unfortunately um, COVID came along and, and shut it all down. So we only got the two home games last year, which um, yeah, definitely impacted us financially. But um, yeah, we're hoping to, um, to bounce back this year. Look, it's been a challenge getting people back to the footy. I think the crowds are down a little bit and um, certainly we're struggling with volunteers. As, you know, the old story at local clubs is that there's too few doing too much. But in the players' stakes, we, we lost, I guess, some of the older players, but we've been really active in recruiting um, under-19 players and, and our, our, our age in the senior side, if you took three guys out of it, um, three of our older guys, average age is probably 20 and they play an exciting brand of football you know we expect to have some tough times you know some ups and downs but when they get cracking the under 19 is coming through and those young blokes coming through it's a really exciting brand of football to watch and um, hopefully we see a bit of that today the new facility is a hit with players and supporters but nothing is ever perfect it's got the thumbs up we've got one little achilles heel um, overlooked in the planning stage by everyone and um, that's a, a, a bit of shoulder for our netball as they're 150 metres away from the pavilion so if you get a lousy day weather wise they haven't got anything in the way of shoulder for the spectators. My wife's not keen on that coming to watch my daughters play netball but uh, we're just about to embark on a, on a fundraising effort to build a shelter for next year. So anyone out there that wants to, to, to donate and look after women's sport, we'd love to hear from you. Gathered for a function in the plush new rooms, Seaford's past players relished the extra comfort. The viewing for people to come and see is unbelievable inside the club rooms. You couldn't really do that before, or you struggle to see out the foggy windows, but the people in front of you, but Awesome viewing for people that want to come see and sit in the rooms or outside, downstairs. The viewing is unbelievable. I, you know, you feel like you're just about on the ground, whether you're out in the terrace or glass viewing behind the glass in the rooms. It, it's just a great view and I'd, I'd challenge any ground, anywhere, to have better viewing than what we've got. It's one of the reasons I hung around for a bit longer than I probably should have. Um, I, was, I retired last year when I was 35. I probably would have done a bit earlier. If, if it wasn't for the new rooms that were coming um, and the new deck, um, but it's awesome facility for the community going forward. I, I live K down the road, so my kids are going to grow up using this every weekend. So it's really beneficial for the whole community, not just the football club. Although the trains still roll past the outer, the trees are gone 
and the ground itself is very different. They, they updated it and redid all the turf and you know, changed the, sh the shape of it. I think when we played it was a bit of a pear shape, um, but now it's obviously perfect size now. Yes, it's very different. The netballers now play behind one forward pocket, while the kids love the new playground at the other end. But alas, one of my favourite old scoreboards is gone. Yeah, the old scoreboard with our Tiger logo on it um, was, was pretty special. We've got a past players day today and there's going to be some reminiscing. They'll probably talk about that scoreboard. We've got a lovely tr trophy cabinet with the, the feature backdrop wall is uh, made out of the old brick from the old pavilion. So we've still retained a little bit of history in the place. Yeah, it was good. The, the Tiger art, that was state of the art when they got Tiger got um, painted on there. But no, look, the scoreboard was good. That was, um, used to get there after a few functions, you'd end up in the scoreboard at some time as well. <laughs> but, um, but obviously now we've got a, a fancy electric one and plenty of graphics and things like that. We can put sponsors up there and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, we, it's got to move on with the times and yeah. A special presentation to Josh, Jeremy and Rizwan, who wrecked up nearly a thousand games between them before retiring last year, was the highlight of the day as the past players spurred on their current day counterparts. Getting numbers to local football these days, it helps. Um, having days like this, where you get all the past players, the life members, getting down here, getting around the new boys, because it's a young senior team at the moment, but they're showing a lot of spirit, and to see everyone who actually cares about the football club, which is usually the past players, um, it's, yeah, it's usually beneficial for them. And the young Tigers turned on a dazzling display as they stormed home with an eight goal final quarter blitz to grab victory, their fourth on the trot. The Tigers are back home and they're roaring in their new den. The RSN Sandown Cup, a race that's been won by legends, Old Trees, Tornado Tears, and a race with a famous not so legendary moment. Book your $49 tickets in the exclusive Carlton Draft Sports Bar, the RSN Sandown Cup.